Welcome. This is the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook meeting January 12th, 2016. Would you kindly rise with the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start tonight's meeting, I would like to take a moment and just thank all the folks here at Town Hall for what's been a very smooth transition from one supervisor to another. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Linda Stoddard and Ann Conway, Sue McCann, and also Sue Crane uh, for leaving the place in impeccable order and just making the transition uh, enjoyable and one that I found to be uh, quite easy. Um, we also send our condolences to former town supervisor Sue Crane on the passing of her sister uh, last week and uh, she should know our thoughts are with her. Uh, we also uh, want to thank all the folks that came out for the swearing-in ceremony on January 1st. It was really a tribute more to the people of this community uh, than for the individuals who were elected. But uh, now that I've mentioned that, let's welcome our newest town board member, Sarah and Bowden. And, and welcoming, welcoming back Harry Colgan, our stage town board member. <laughs> So uh, we'll proceed uh, t with tonight's uh, town board meeting as we do with all town board meetings with um, the supervisor's report, which I believe you all have in your folder. And this is the statement of the supervisor dated December 31st, 2015. The opening balance was $3,102,640.70. Receipts for the month were $521,331. Disbursements were $481,717.97, leaving a balance of three million one hundred and forty two thousand two hundred and fifty three and seventy three cents. Can we have a motion to approve the supervisor's report? So moved. Yeah, Any you seconds? Have, you do have some budget adjustments yes, here. Yes, that's okay. coming next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. The next item is uh, town board budget adjustments. As we move to close the books for 2015, our business manager, Ann Conway, has asked us to take a look at these budget adjustments in the various funds. Are there any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve the budget adjustments? So move. Second it before I finish reading. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Just so the public understands, the, book, the books will be officially closed within 60 days of the end of the year and will be available at the town clerk's office for viewing. Our next uh, item on the agenda, as always, is the clerk's report. This is the town clerk monthly report, December 1 through December 31st. 
Total local shares remitted to supervisor as town revenue, $2,476.48. Amount remitted to New York State Ag and Markets for the spade and neuter program, $93. Amount remitted to New York State Department of Racing and Wagering, $30. And the amount paid to New York State Environmental Conservation, $157.77 for a total state, county, and local revenue of $2,757.25. Pursuant to section 27 sub 1 of the town law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, Town Clerk, Town of Red Hook, during the period stated above in connection with my office. So that's for December. I just have a couple of little um, Announcements. Sure. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, our 2016 recycle permits are available. You can purchase them at the town hall. You can purchase them at the recycle center, or we can always do it um, by mail. Just send a self-addressed stamped envelope with your uh, check, and we'll mail it right back to you. Um, I also, the other day, um, two lovely ladies from St. Paul's Lutheran Church stopped in and presented the town with the history of the Lutheran Church. 1715 to 2015, it was wow. a 300 year celebration. So if anybody ever wants to come and take a look at it, it's filed in my office, got some really beautiful pictures and proclamations in it, so it's kind of nice to see. Um, I went down to Poughkeepsie yesterday and picked up my tax bills, so um, I'm, fortunately for everybody, you're gonna be getting that letter very shortly. Um, I had a, a legal notice that will be posted um, Thursday and this Sunday. And it's just basically stating that I have received the tax roll and the warrant, and it lists when I collect from um, and what percentage if you don't pay by uh, February 29th, uh, the penalty increases, and then as of June 1st, the um, tax roll is returned down to Dutchess County. <clears throat> so that's for the due date. It's February 29th. That's right. It's a leap year this year, so mm -hmm. the 29th. The, the total warrant that we're collecting is $8,699,644.30. The town portion of that, the town will keep $3,152,585.28. And the county will keep over $5,000,000, 5, 5, dollars um, and just a reminder, all d dogs need to be licensed in New York State. Uh, we need current rabies info. A lot of people say they don't realize that the dogs have to be licensed, but they do. So please come on in and license your dogs. Oh, I have the abstract also. Sorry, okay. I've got to report that. This is the abstract for November of 2015. These are the vouchers that were, were town board approved. Vouchers 19611 through 19695. Out of the general A, 96,511 and 22 cents. From the general B, 22,659 and seven cents. From the highway DB, $98,071 and 19 cents. Out of water, O and M, $5,881 and 75 cents for a total abstract of $223,000. Well, that's a good number. I hereby certify that the vouchers numbered 19611 through 19695 processed in the month of November 2015 are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. So you can, town clerk. And that's it. Thank do, you. Do I hear a motion to approve the clerk's report? <coughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, continuing with announcements. Uh, we'd like to uh, uh, let you know and celebrate uh, Bob Fennell, who worked for the town in the building department for over a quarter of a century, retired. We had a very nice luncheon for him uh, last Thursday here in Town Hall, and uh, we look forward to uh, finding out what the future holds for him. Uh, continuing with announcements, um, there was to be two um, meetings with the community on the draft uh, master trail plan uh, this afternoon, as a matter of fact. But unfortunately, Mother Nature had uh, something to say about that. So 
Uh, both of those will be rescheduled, the one today at 4 o'clock in Tivoli Village Hall, and also, I believe it was 6 o'clock, Red Hook High School. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about the Hook Trail, uh, it's available on our website. On the front page, you just click on, and it's got uh, wonderful suggestions on how we might build uh, a trail system here in Red Hook. Uh, continuing on, um, Jill Lundquist writes to us that uh, this year in January, the Lifetime Learning Institute at Bard College is offering free programs every Wednesday in January, and they are open to the public. You don't need to be an LLI member in order to attend. Um, you can get more information on Bard's website. Um, in uh, it's in your packet under correspondence, but because I think it's going to be uh, a topic that folks are going to be very interested in uh, this spring, I've moved it up into announcements. So we've uh, received word from Department of Transportation, and in fact, Teresa and I met with them and others at uh, the Fork in the Road uh, in Rock City that they are going to be uh, replacing a bridge along the Sauk Hill, which will necessitate uh, all traffic coming from the Taconic and eastward uh, to be redirected 308 to 9G to come up uh, then into Red Hook on Route 9. So because we know that's going to be a t hot topic of conversation and concern for our residents, um, we're preparing a map and a notice. Uh, I think we'll have up on the town's website by the time this airs, uh, showing you uh, the detour route um, so you can adjust accordingly. We understand that work uh, is scheduled now to begin April 1st and conclude just in time for the fair in August. But again, coming from the east, you will no longer be able to take Route 199. You'll be rerouted to Route 308 to come up Red Hook from the south. And that's all the announcements I have. Does anyone else have some announcements? Harry? It also includes going to the east, doesn't it? Yes, I'm sorry, it does. Yeah, it's just okay. easier to describe to folks. Uh, yeah, right. But yes, uh, yeah. that's correct. Any other announcements, Sarah? No. I don't think this will air on Panda in time, but um, we do have an e-waste event this Saturday um, over in the Town Recycling Center, and it's a wonderful partnership between the village and the town and Bard College. Bard students will be participating as part of their Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Engagement, and um, so we'll be collecting e-waste. It's all free except for the old style of um, CRT monitor and television. Those will have a small charge, and the there's a list of fees. Um, I think it's on our website, is it? Mm -hmm. It should be. Yeah. I think there's it a link is. on our website. Mm -hmm. I'll check, mm -hmm. and if it is, and I'll put it up. But, yep. um, so that's going on 8 to 12 on Saturday. And there is a slight chance that um, the weather forecast is for snow. So in case this does air before a rescheduled date, um, folks can go on the website and get more information about that. Any other announcements? Bill? No. So we move right into the public comment period for the few of you who braved uh, the snow to come out today. Are there any public comments? Okay, hearing none, let's get right down to business. Okay, the first item on the agenda is the annual town reorganization. And Christine Shaw, our attorney for the town, has been kind enough to draft the resolution. I will let you know that there are essentially uh, no changes to this resolution from last year's resolution, with the exception of updating the salaries. I will go ahead and just briefly um, give you the highlights. Right, and the mileage rate, give you the highlights of the resolution, which is m number one, meeting dates, which will continue to be the second Tuesday and the fourth Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. here in Town Hall. Our official newspapers are remaining as Poughkeepsie Journal and Kingston Freeman. The depositories, number three, continue to be M&T Bank, 
the Bank of Greene County and Key Bank National Association. Number four is our petty cash requirements, and they are not to exceed uh, $500 per officer or $1,000 for receiver. The town clerk, which is also our receiver, the maximum is $500. That is allotted. The salaries uh, for 2016 are as follows. Supervisor, 28925 Town board members each, 8121 Town clerk, 52211 Town justices each, 16699 Highway superintendent, 61319 the mileage reimbursement rate, as Chris alluded to, um, has actually gone down from 57 cents per mile to 54, one would assume because of the gas prices. Um, and number seven is undertaking, which um, has not changed uh, from last year, which uh, includes the supervisor, town clerk, receiver of taxes, deputy town clerk, deputy receiver of taxes and so on. Check signing the town board of the town of Red Hook authorizes the following to sign checks. Supervisor Robert McKeon, in his absence Deputy Supervisor Bill O'Neill, and in the absence of both any of the board members Harry Colgan, Bill O'Neill, James Ross, or Sarah <coughs> in Bowdoin. And number nine finally is the town board hereby authorizes and directs the supervisor to submit to the town clerk within 60 days after the close of the fiscal year a copy of the supervisor's report to the state controller. And that will be published within 10 days of filing. Are there any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve the resolution so number moved. one of 2016? So Second. moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, number two on our agenda is the Association of Towns. I'm sorry, we're going to get to some of the appointments first, perhaps. Um, I'm assuming you all have had a chance to take a look at our January 2016 draft of these appointments. No? <laughs> no? Okay, Harry, I know you've been out. Um, in particular, I pretty much know anyway. Okay. I was hoping maybe we could tackle the liaisons tonight. Um, going down the list, we have our official depositories, newspapers, safety officer, disaster <coughs> preparedness, emergency interim. I think that's all, all similar to last year. Mm -hmm. CEO Building Inspector part-time is now Lou Farisi. Director of Purchasing is Ted Kudzi. Animal Control Officer. We will need to uh, appoint or reappoint Stephanie as our Doll Control Officer. Would somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll, to I'll, I'll move to reappoint Stephanie Fitzpatrick. I think she's done a great job for the town. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh, we have our Panda representatives. Who's our liaison? Who's been our liaison for Panda? Well, supervisor, basically. Okay. Yeah. You know, I would do it because I'm over there all the time anyway. <laughs> Well, we can we can figure that out, Harry. Yeah. Okay, our deputy supervisor this year will be William O'Neill. We thank Jim Ross for doing it last year. I was thinking back, and it was 12 years ago. I think you were the deputy supervisor, also. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll rotate that around. 
You were a little younger then, Bill. No. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I say more enthusiastic? No, I was the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are supervisor appointments, so blame me. Um, the budget officer uh, will continue to be Rose Ryder. And the secretary part-time to the supervisor will be Linda Stoddard. Our, we have our town historian, Winty Aldrich, who has agreed to continue on. And we have some correspondence about the vacant position, the assistant to the town historian. And Winty <coughs> sent me an email uh, with regard to that as well. Uh, Patsy Vogel, who is stepping down, she's moved to Ryan Beck and Fields. We should have uh, someone else in that position, is recommending Emily Major, who I know very well from Historic Red Hook. And um, Winty also sent an email uh, just a little while ago echoing those sentiments. Um, if you are all okay with that, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Emily Major as the assistant to the town, or rather, yes, assistant to the town historian. Second. Any discussion? With, with the thanks to uh, Patsy Vogel for the work that she did. Oh, she's done great work over the years yes. for both Historic Red Hook and the town, and we wish her well. She's not going far, she's just over the border. So, um, Again, back to our motion. We have a second from Bill to Bill approve. Seconded, yep, Emily Major. Yeah. And I hear a vote. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations, Emily. Thank you for braving the snow all the way from Tivoli. Town clerk appointments. Sue McCann. Any changes? No. Looks, all looks. the same. Yes. Clara Horst, Claire Horst, and Claire Horst for Deputy Town Clerk and Registrar of Vital Statistics and Receiver of Taxes. Our Highway Superintendent appointments, our Deputy Ricky Schlomer will stay on, we hope. Terrific. All right, moving along. Town Employees Officers, Highway Secretary Carol Thomason. Assistant Budget Officer Deborah Kuhn, Bookkeeper to Supervisor Ann Conway, Deputy Assessors Part-Time Diana Picciano, and Transfer Station Operator TJ Hackett. Uh, solid Waste Attendance William, and I won't pronounce his last name. Zigathy. <laughs> Nicole Paulus. Um, are there any recommended changes to these appointments? All right, water district meter readers uh, remain the same. Town physician, attorney for planning board, software planner. I think it's been a while since we've gone out RFP for planner, but I would like to make a recommendation for 2016. We keep the same planner. We're in the middle of a few projects. Mm -hmm. Town CPA is Lori Doty. Any recommended changes to this list? Okay. All right. You know, if it's uh, if it's required, I move to adopt the list as you just uh, uh, indicated, the one and a half pages. One two. Okay. I'll second that bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. We'll see if we can work a little bit through miscellaneous. Uh, town board meetings we have scheduled for 7.30, uh, second Tuesday and fourth Wednesday. There's been some, some discussion about possibly changing to keep it consistent on Tuesdays, but that's only initial discussions. We can take that up next month perhaps. Um, monthly and annual reports to the town board. We've asked for those to be in noon on the Friday before the second board meeting of the month. Any changes to that recommended? Okay. 
So C is the town board organizational responsibility. The chain of responsibility typically is the supervisor, deputy supervisor, town board members in alphabetical order. Harry Colgan, Sarah M. Bowden, William O'Neill, James Ross. Any recommended changes there? No? Okay. Uh, D is mileage. If you would kindly just write in the change. It Since it's, five and it's 54, 54 cents a mile. 50, 54 even. Mm -hmm. Right. We take our cue from the IRS on this. Town departments. We have the chain of command is the department head, deputy department head if there is one, supervisor, and then town board liaison. Okay. Here we go to the town board liaisons to town departments. I think what I've done is at least begin the process of wherever uh, Supervisor Crane was, I'm willing to be that same liaison for that same department. And Sarah, maybe we could start with you since you're new and Brenda has left, obviously. Um, any comments on? the liaison assignments she had? In the in that top list, the yeah. town board liaisons to town departments, I'm fine with the ones she had. She had animal control, recycling, school district, and um, the village of Red Hook. I'd be happy to take those four, unless anybody else wants one. I don't hear a lot of fighting over it no, right now. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. We used to. Thank you. All right. Um, and and gentlemen, I I know you've been doing some of these uh, for some time now. Or is there any desire to swap with anyone on any of these? I'm fine with the ones that I have. Okay. Yeah. Jen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the boarding committee liaison. And again, I'm happy to take the ones that used to be designated for the former supervisor. And I'm happy to take on the ones that Brenda had. You are making life easy for us. Thank you, Sarah. Sure. I have no problem keeping the ones that I had. Likewise. You yeah. Very good. Um, we're now at the point where we're going to discuss the composition of the various committee. Um, we have unfortunately only received some uh, correspondence back from some of the chairs on what they would like to do or have happened to their committees or boards. Um, we do have a couple that we could tackle tonight and, and perhaps we'll pick up at the next meeting and finish the rest of the list. Um, in particular, the planning board and the, the ZBA, um, we, have, we may have some additional um, things to decide. Um, the Agriculture and Open Space Advisory Committee we have not heard back from yet, so I'd like to leave that to next meeting. Assessment Review Board, same with that. Uh, CPF, my understanding is there was a meeting this afternoon which I attended and all the members on the CPF PDR Advisory Committee wish to be reappointed. They are Susan Azrati as a member and as the chair for a term to, I'm sorry, her term is not up, but her chair is up. I would like to make a motion uh, to approve Susan Azrati as the chair of the CPF PDR Advisory Committee. Chair or co-chair? Uh, as well, let's call her co-chair for now. And does Mary Ann Johnson want to Mary Ann Johnson wants to stay on. We'll call her co-chair. I thought Susan was, was the full chair. Is that right, Frank? That's correct. Okay, so I'm glad I got oh, that right. So there is no co -chair. So there is no co. We'll just call Susan as Roddy chair. Susan's that was my understanding. Acting as chair for some time. 
chairperson. If she hasn't been chairperson. Um, so there's only one. And we are in the process, just so the public knows, we're required to update the CPF plan every few years. And that committee has started the process to uh, update it, and it will be available for viewing sometime this spring. It needs to be updated by May. Um, so uh, the members up for reappointment, their term ending in 2015, are Marianne Johnson, Peter Hubble, John Hardiman. Well, Marianne is actually 17, according to this, Robert. Yeah, she was just co-chair for a Oh, thank you. Right. So we'll skip that. So we just it's have Peter and John. And John. Peter and John. I'd like to make a motion that we approve their appointment for a two-year term ending in 2017. Um, this is this three years. It's oh, sorry, this is oh, we're three on three. Years. Sorry, 2018. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That takes care of that committee. The Conservation Advisory Council has a couple of openings, the way I understand the nine members. One, two, yeah, three, we're, four, um, five, six, seven. I'm proud to report, this, so that's my former committee, and yeah. I'm proud to report we have two wonderful applicants already lined up who have been attending our meetings, one of whom is in the audience today, Lori Urban, and Michael Collegio. Um, who grew up here and now attends Bard College is our second applicant, and we, we as a committee believe they'll do a wonderful job, so we're hoping that you'll have no problem approving them. And you'll see letters from both of them, letters of interest in your packets. Well, is, are, is one of them going to replace somebody who's already oh, I'm out? sorry, so Ann Rubin, who's on there right now, has, yeah. has resigned. She may not have sent in an official letter, I don't know, so I don't, I don't know if we can... Okay. She's can you give us those the names again? Sure, sure. Um, Lori is out here. Yeah, Lori Urban. Lori Urban. Urban. And we can do it pending the receipt yeah. of her official letter or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll make a note to remind Ann if she hasn't already Good sent it. Let's play this first. Yep. You should have. Michael Lori Houston yeah. sent something out. Stating that Ann was. And was But she suggested she send us a resignation letter. Well, she hasn't yet. But she okay. Hasn't. So I'll no. remind her to well, next time she's in town. We do have letters of interest from both Michael and Lori. Well, while we're here, we have two people interested in it. Be good to fill it, right? Works yeah, out well. Um, so, uh, included in a potential resolution, well, why don't we appoint those two separately? Sarah, would you like to motion? Sure, I move that we. Uh, Lori Urban and Michael Collegio for a membership on the CAC. Terms to, that's a two-year appointment. That's terms to conclude 2017. And also, Sorry, should no. we also reappoint Lori Houston as chair? I yeah. she wants to continue. So I yeah. I was going to do separate resolution separate? for because okay. there are other people who also need to be re oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So just for the two. Now, two is, is Lori going to replace Ann's spot? Or the vacant spot. I think yeah. if you're, can I just suggest Maybe that if you're not certain level. the position is open, you might yeah. want to defer that second appointment until the next meeting, just as a matter of procedure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we didn't get a letter of resignation, I think we're pretty sure. But um, sure, we can do that. Um, should we start with Lori since she's in attendance? I yeah, Lori had that. technically <laughs> sent her letter in first. Okay. <laughs> I have her letter okay, in here. See? <laughs> the early, the yeah, early for vacant spot. Right? Yeah, for the vacant spot. That would be my spot. So. Okay. Okay, so can I, should I just start over? Please. Yes. All right. I move that we appoint Lori Urban mm -hmm. for a two-year appointment mm -hmm. to the vacant spot on the CAC. I second your motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Glad to have you board. It's a, it's a great committee. Um, so we still have uh, a couple of members uh, to re-up, including Jen Cavanaugh, Dennis Collet, Michael Zeely, and yeah, I think that's right. Is that right? And Lori Houston. And Lori. And Lori Houston. For some reason, her line is combined. So all four of them. 
I'd like to move that we report we appoint the four of them to the Conservation Advisory Council for a two year term ending in two thousand seventeen. Do I hear a second? The chair is sixteen. Right, I haven't chaired her yet. Oh, you haven't chaired her yet. I haven't yet. chaired I'm her sorry. yet. I'm just appointing her. We've got to get her on there first. I'm right, we've got to get her on there first. 2017. Everybody is appointed for two years. Second, thank you, Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, it's approved. Um, and our final motion with this committee yeah. is uh, yeah. Chairperson Lori Husted for a one year term ending in 2016. I'd like to make a motion that we approve that Second. appointment. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, we have not heard back from Design Review Hamlet, so I would ask that we wait till the next meeting. Disaster preparedness, uh, same thing there. Economic Development Committee. Um, the only thing I have heard is that uh, Chris Close has sent in word that um, he no longer wants to be considered for the chair of that committee. He's interested in any openings that um, may uh, occur on either planning or the ZBA. I think he's sent in letters in the past. Um, and they met at their most recent meeting and he sent in word that um, they would like to have Dick Wambach become the new chair of that committee. So I would like to move that we appoint Richard Wambach as the chair of the Economic Development Committee for a one-year term ending in 2016. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Aye. And then uh, we need to re-up a couple of individuals uh, for our two-year appointment. That's Ken Miglarelli, Chris Close, Amanda Bodian. Those three individuals. Would somebody like to make a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The Ethics Board, I have not heard back from them, but we do have a vacancy. And I think we will be sending out a notice, Sue, maybe you and I can work on where we know there are vacancies, send out a notice to the public mm -hmm. um, and put it on the website. We'll have more about that. Greenway and Trails, I have not heard back from them. IT. Same, but we do have vacancies on both of those committees. So if you are interested in Greenway and Trail, if you are interested in technology, please, uh, we welcome your participation. We have also an intermunicipal shared services highway working group, um, which is made up of members, um, trustees, and town board members. And I believe that um, we have a full group with the possible exception of, no, we have a, a new Tivoli rep, which will be the mayor, Joel Griffith. And I guess I have to make a motion to ask you to appoint me to the in Intermunicipal Shared Services Highway Working Group since Sue Crane had that position. Would anybody like to make that motion? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Staying? Okay. And we, did, that, did that include Next Joel? One. That included, well, let's make a separate motion yeah. for Joel just to be sure. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Mayor Joel Griffith as the Tivoli Rep, along with Jean Ann Schneider, to the Intermunicipal Shared Services Working Group. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. The Intermunicipal Task Force, Bill. Well, I'm not 
<laughs> uh, I would say it should stay, stay the same. Um, Do you want to take this up at your next Friday yeah, meeting? Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we can fine tune it the next week. We can tackle that next week. Planning Board, we have not heard back from the Planning Board. I did reach out to the Planning Board Chair again a couple of days ago. I have not heard back. Um, and we do have some uh, vacancies with the alternate position that we know of and one position that is up for renewal as well as the chair uh, chairperson itself. So having no correspondence on that, I think that we should leave that to the next meeting if that's okay with you all. And the rec commission, on the other hand, John Kuhn and typical fashion has everything written out for us. We do have some new members. Um, Harry, since you're the liaison to the, uh, the recreation committee. Well, they had one new member. Okay. Is Lori Lovace. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correct. It's Lori Lovis. Lovis, okay. Lori Lovis. Yeah. Yeah. So, and otherwise, um, it, it, it will remain as it is. We have one young member, and uh, and, um, I, and she she was in high school, <laughs> okay. high school member, uh, uh, Haley. So I don't know whether she will be. But I think she graduated, but I'm not positive. And I would like to ask John. That was one of our student members. We student had, member, yes. We had two student members, Nick yes. Carl Carlson. Yeah, Haley was a regular participant. Okay. Um, I, 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 leave, leave that as it is. I would like to, like to add Lori, though. Okay. So uh, a couple of things then we would need to do, Harry, is we would need to recognize that there a vacancy exists um, with the resignation of Hollis Cochran. Um, He's uh, being made an advisor, yeah. is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Unless we want to have an additional member. Um, I think that's a actually a code established commission with a certain it? number of members. Okay, it's a okay. commission. All right. Yeah. So we won't mess with that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Harry, would you like to make a motion? Yeah, make that a motion that that we uh, <coughs> that we appoint Hollis Cochran as a uh, um, what, what's what's the right right term, Chris? Well, I don't know. I've, it's called I've an. Heard about this. I think they yeah, are as an advisor to the committee. They're calling him as an advisor and, and uh, uh, appoint Lori Lovace <coughs> as uh, a, a full member. As a full member, it's a two-year appointment. The term mm -hmm. ending in 2017. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So moved. Um, I would also like to make a motion that well, we continue uh, based upon John Kuhn's recommendation with Doug Strowinski as chair. All all chair positions are one-year appointments. Mm -hmm. um, will someone second my motion? Second. Please? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, we have then three members who need to be re-upped, if you will. Charlie Nugent, Tom Gilbert, Yvonne Turchetti. Uh, for two-year appointments ending in 2017. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, St. Margaret's Committee. I see we have a couple of vacancies. If you are interested, I know uh, many folks joined us for a visioning session here in Town Hall a couple months back. If you are interested in St. Margaret's and the future of that building, uh, we invite you to uh, uh, join the committee and participate in uh, the prospects for, for that institution. That, that committee may be and maybe worthy of some restructuring with, with uh, some of the financial implications of what we have to address with that over the next several months. Harry, is that something maybe you could work with John Kuhn and Doug Strawinski? I yeah, know we have been involved about a lot in, that. In, the, in In the fall, we talked about it a great deal. Okay, if you could if make you some work. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Make some recommendations to us, Harry. That would yeah. be greatly appreciated. Senior Services Committee, we have vacancies there as well. I have not heard back from the chair, 
so I would like us to table that to next month. Sister Cities Working Group, I think we should table that as well. I don't know that that's been an active group uh, lately. Something to look at. Uh, I spend it to his baby and she's... Right. Now, I, I feel like uh, I understand the Tree Preservation Commission. There was some discussion. Nancy Gusky has uh, stepped down as the chair. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, that is yes. correct. Okay. And there was some discussion of a new chair. I don't have any of that correspondence. Is anybody a little bit more up to speed on that? Kathy than Michael. Kathy Michael Kathy will Michael be the chair. Highly yeah. recommended. Yeah. Wasn't there a new member, too, to re replace Nancy? Did Nancy yeah. just get resigned as chair or off the I think she resigned. Well, let's let's uh, yeah, okay. let's come back to that next month. Yeah, and let's, absolutely. If we let's don't know figure sure. out what's happening there. So we're going to just table that one. We're going to table okay. that one as well. Uh, water district water board. I haven't heard anything from Hank, although I did see him in town hall. I don't know of any changes there, but I hesitate to to move on it until we hear back from them. <laughs> and then we have. Uh, next up is Zoning Board of Appeals, and we have on the agenda discussion about that, so we'll pass on that for the time being. And the same with Zoning Review Committee. I have not heard from anyone regarding that committee, so we'll leave that to the second meeting of the month, if you will. Well, John, John Douglas submitted a letter saying that he could... Yes, I'm that. sorry, yes. That'll be part of it. That'll be part of the discussion, but yes, John Douglas... Um, has sent in his resignation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you, Bill. Um, a term that was scheduled to, to end in 2018. Right. So, and we do have letters of interest, um, both old ones and new ones, regarding that. And we'll take that up when we get to that topic on the agenda. Okay. Well, thank you for bearing with us as we get through the reorganization. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Association of Towns meeting uh, 2016. Every February there is a meeting of this organization that is designed to help local governments in managing uh, their affairs and we often have um, members of town hall, uh, town justices, and their staff go down to New York City where the conference is held um, to get um, up to speed on issues that will help us perform our duties. Um, I've given you the rather lengthy items that they would like us to consider all their resolutions, which frankly um, primarily deal with how they operate as an organization. Um, so please take a look at that, and if you have any comments or any recommendations, we have an, another meeting before they need to hear back from us, so we can put it back up on the agenda. What we do need to do, if we could tonight, is uh, we have to designate somebody for any voting matters that take place, uh, this being the second week in February. Uh, typically, that is the town supervisor. Um, I am available this year to go down there. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd be happy to fulfill those duties. Um, if anybody else would like to do it, that's fine too. Any thoughts? I suggest you do it. Okay. That's a move. All right. Second. <laughs> you see how eager they are to do it. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, that being said... You didn't vote yet. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Yes, I heard the voting early. <laughs> okay, I'll pass this on to you, Sue. I believe actually you do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, you've got the, yeah, the, the prettier version. Tomorrow. Okay, very good. 
Um, the next item on the agenda, and, and most of tonight's agenda besides the reorg, um, is really carryover from uh, the previous administration, and hopefully we'll do our best to uh, be true to the spirit of um, those efforts. So um, you, the previous town board had asked for the local law uh, E911 uh, draft to be um, created and discussed and put forward. As you know, last month um, we had uh, Vince Clu uh, Coluccio um, come and give a presentation about uh, this law. Sixteen years ago, I believe, the county implemented regulations having to do with signage so that emergency volunteers knew where they were going when they were trying to get to a certain address. Um, it requires letters of certain size and reflectivity. Um, you all asked for this to be put on the agenda uh, in January. Um, a draft was prepared uh, by our attorney for the town, which uh, I hope you've had a chance to take a peek at. And Chris, did you want to weigh in with just a, a couple of <coughs> things that are slightly different than right. what was in the county law? Let me just give you a couple of comments. Um, we just took the Rhinebeck law, which was presented and requested to be um, enacted, and uh, you know, obviously changed the provisions for Red Hook. Uh, but one of the things that we noted is that the, the way that this law is structured, it is intended to provide a, an, an additional enforcement mechanism, if you will, for what is really a county law effort. And you've got in your packet a copy of the county's law establishing the E911 law. Um, and that is t intended to uh, adopt a consistent um, mechanism for uniform signage throughout the county. Uh, then there's a provision in the county law that allows, but doesn't require, municipalities to implement additional enforcement. And so this law would do that in Red Hook. However, in addition to that additional enforcement, um, this uh, Rhinebeck version of the law also um, adds some additional requirements. And because of the way it was structured, we moved that language out of the part that purports to enforce the county law and move it into a separate section because it's not really part of the county law. It's, it's new, really, to the county. Uh, so these provisions are on the, I guess that would be the, uh, the second to the last page of your draft of the law, and I blacklighted it so you could see where they went. Um, so that's why that was moved. I wanted to call that to your attention. And I also want to call to your attention, a couple of these provisions are really, um, they're different from the county provisions, but they're really just, you know, I would say good context. Um, you know, for example, uh, if the building is more than 50 feet for the road and if the mailbox is used, it should be on your side or else put a post on your side. You know, these are some things that seem like common sense, but these are things that are being recommended here. And that um, if the driveway serves more than one building, if there's a fork in the road, you should have a post at that fork. Again, it seems like common sense, but um, you know, this is what is being proposed. The other thing that's in this provision that I want to call to your attention is that the county provision for residences is three inches for the height of the letters, and this changes that or would change that to four inches for residences. So residents would have to change their current signage, even if they've got current signage, and change it to four inches. Um, so that's the Rhinebeck version um, for your consideration. <coughs> And the three Rhinebeck changed it to four, four, or the county did? The Rhinebeck did. Not the county. The county, as I understand it, is still three. Mm -hmm. Although it's, the county has a two-tier system. It appears to be, from looking at the local law, it appears to be three for residences and four for commercials. Commercial. And this was also a recommendation of our disaster preparedness committee. The committee to right, four brought inches. this Rhinebeck version forward and wanted to bring attention to the need you know, for people to comply with the 911 law and that they felt that people weren't complying with the 911 law to begin with, the signage law. I meant to measure the, the 
my, the side of my mailbox. I think I have three insulators on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only concern is if yeah. we go from three to four, the people that have complied are all uh, yeah. not in compliance Out of now. compliance, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I highlighted yeah. it for you to think about. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is, is there, has there been any discussion about giving some prior notification to these uh, families in Red Hook who haven't yet put up the signage uh, before we unload a law? I think this is for the board to discuss. Yeah. We just prepared a law based on what was out there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Um, I, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what everyone has to say on this topic. I, I for one, am not comfortable while this is... Uh, critically important. We need our firefighters to know where they have to go. Uh, I'm not comfortable with the law, a county law that's been in place uh, for 16, 17 years now, um, that all of a sudden we're going to have local enforcement and require within 30 days that they uh, make these changes in the middle of winter, as a matter of fact. And then we're going to penalize them $150 according to um, at least this draft, I think there's probably a better, nicer, and perhaps even a more efficient way that we can handle this. Perhaps there's even grant monies that we can uh, tap into and engage some of our volunteers in assisting with compliance. I just think this is a little heavy-handed to start out with um, all this time. I, I don't know that this is really something that folks are thinking about right now, this law. Sarah, do so you have any thoughts about Is it on the agenda just for us to think about tonight, or is it for us to vote on? Well, this is, this is something that um, you all decided uh, last year that you wanted on the January ag agenda. You wanted oh, so a draft just, law. It just moved over. But so no, I definitely need more time to think about it. I, I have a sense from that meeting we had earlier that it's it's a result of a great frustration that the county has had over these years trying to implement the law. And now they're kind of passing it down. The fact that Rhinebeck is a little aggressive with their details. Uh, so, I mean, my thought is that we should really uh, have some kind of an effort to notify the citizens that this is what the fire, the first responders would really ask for your own yeah. purposes to do this yeah. and uh, see if we can get some response like that. Yeah. Sarah. Well, I guess I'm wondering, um, you know, the enforcement of this law would be coming from the zoning enforcement officer, and I don't really see Steve driving around town writing addresses down, you know, so I'm just wondering, you know, if we pass such a law, what would, what would the instruction be, you know, to the enforcement officer who, who's supposed to, who's kind of tasked with? There's a safety need, but this is very heavy-handed. Okay. It seems to me there's... There's some something in between there, and I think our highway superintendent has something to contribute. Um, there, there have been similar um, efforts in other towns. Yeah. I think Milan was very successful, and in in some places, what they did instead of charging a fine for $150, the penalty was the cost right. of the sign right. that was provided. Right. You know, so either they could do it themselves, or if you had to provide them a sign or help them with it then they would pay the cost of the sign instead of a flat $150. Right. So there are other examples of, that would be worth taking a, a, a closer look at. I do believe that having the buildings numbered is very important, and it is a great source of frustration, even for us um, at the highway department. And um, I, I think it's an important thing to make public and, and educate the public. And maybe by making it a law, it will have a little more uh, reality for people. But I, I would um, say that the $150 fine is a little bit steep for something that people aren't quite aware of at this point in time, and maybe it could be structured a different way in the future. Even as this law is written, it's almost impossible to implement. We have, we have trailer parks. We have all, of, all the mailboxes are in a row. There are a number of places in town where there, there are... There are alleys and whatever with all the mailboxes in the row right over here. Uh, the new, de new development on, uh, um, on on Firehouse Lane. It's in the village, but it's the same situation. But each, they have each structure besides the mailbox. If the mailboxes yeah, are all outside, I each structure it. would have on it that lettering. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're responding to a fire and there's a string of mailboxes and that number's on there. 
when you're going into where the buildings are, you're going to see that number on the building as well. It's not only for the mailboxes. Teresa, you know more about signs than any of us. What's your feeling on the three or four inches? I think that the three inches is adequate. If you drive down Route 9, have you ever looked for these signs yes, yeah. in, in town? Yeah. If you drive route, down Route 9, you can see the little blue signs the with the white letters. Signs. You can yeah. see them. Yeah. For residential, I would Are think that if, if it's bridges? adequate for the county roads, it should be adequate for um, the town roads. But again, there are other towns close to us that we can compare, if not just with Rhinebeck. I know that Milan had a big um, effort, and they were pretty successful. So I would say keep the discussion going. Yeah. Um, because it is important, but maybe change it so that it suits what you're looking for in Red Hook. I think that's exactly right. I think this is potentially a, another opportunity to do community building. We can make it a, you know, a, a sort of a, a mission that includes, you know, volunteers. Um, and that's a fun event. You know, we have e-waste this weekend. We do our annual street cleanup. They're all important things. Um, I just think that we could do something that's a lot friendlier for our, our citizens and, and be even more successful, perhaps. If we have to get to the point where we have enforcement of this law with penalties, then, then we'll get there, because it's an important thing. But, but not right off the bat, I don't think. No, and, and the intent is for safety's sake. Yeah. And it is, it is something that is extremely important. I'm on the Disaster Preparedness Committee, so I've sat in with a lot of these meetings, and um, that's the main focus is that if you want your responders to know where you live, you have to let them know where by putting those numbers on. It's the easiest way. Yeah, the consequences, I think we all understand. Going down a shared driveway and not making the right turn on a shared driveway, uh, you know, could could be profound. So, um, any any further discussion on this uh, topic? Perhaps we can bring it up again sometime next month and see if we can come up with some friendlier ways initially. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, I mean, uh, should we? Since we don't seem to two things of this draft, we one we haven't decided the three or four inches, and two the. $150 fine. I, I think, uh, you know, we all seem to think yeah. that's a little bit unreasonable. So if we're going to revisit it, maybe we should eliminate that and, and discuss if we think the three inches is adequate, leave it at the three inches, which is what the county has as well. And then, you know, like the, the way Teresa suggested that Milan had done this as far as enforcement or something like that. Right. Right. And even then make it a law, and then, then I think it's our job to educate the public as much as we can before we, you know, yeah. we start finding people are penalizing yeah. them, yeah. And perhaps we can incorporate in the law, if they already have three inches, that's sufficient. If they're getting new, we'd ask them yep. to get four. You know, something like that. Okay, uh, any other further discussion on this topic? Um, sounds like we can um, table this until next month. Um, we may have made a mistake with the, the rec commission. Yeah, appointments. Okay. Let me, can I can I go back and uh, we can always go back, Harry. Okay. Um, we have we have uh, we have Doug as the chair, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have Charlie Charlie Nugent as a full full member. Yeah. Melissa, Tom Gilbert, uh, Shannon, Yvonne. Yeah. Lori. New, yeah, and Hollis is an advisor. Yep, yeah. we we did all that. We, we did. Yeah, we re up. We did it in, in that order. Okay. We did. Yeah, we re up. Charlie, okay, Tom, Yvonne, and Lori. Okay. 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 Never hurts to double check, though. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. The next item on the agenda is um, a continuation of the process uh, to update our the zoning code. Um, with respect to amendments uh, regarding uh, our historic <coughs> districts. Um, you have received uh, both the most recent version of the law, which um, just as a reminder to the community, we had some informational sessions here at Town Hall, two of them, uh, over the course of 
the fall, which were um, uh, well attended and I think uh, quite informative. Um, one of which was available, I believe, on Panda as well. Uh, regarding these updates to uh, our zoning code. So we have in your packets a resolution uh, to begin uh, the CEPR work and the LWRP consistency, including uh, in that resolution is to also begin, uh, but not finalize, um, any map changes associated with this. Um, is there any questions or any discussions um, about the last time the we um, discussed it, Robert? There was questions from the public and amongst ourselves even about certain sections of this proposal that weren't really in the historic district. Right. And we should be very clear if we intend to keep them exactly where they are and how it affects the, the code. And I know that we had left it that that was our intention to do that. Right. And I think we, we discussed that at the informational uh, sessions. I think both you and Sue brought, brought up that topic um, as well. And I believe Michelle in her presentation uh, covered the changes um, in, in that vein. Are there any other comments before we... Uh, well, well, what we're trying to do is, is to um, request assistance from the county for supporting documentation for this law. Well, and to ask Michelle to prepare the, the seeker. seeker analysis, yes. which is, you know, more extensive than for usual. In other words, just law. move forward. Move forward. Right. We, right. We, don't have, we don't have the cast and stone version of the law. Right. In yet. fact, she will be making a few little edits, for example, to conform the legislative intent paragraph to the rest of the document because in December, um, some additional provisions were added, yeah. and so she's going to yeah. clean that up a little bit. Uh, but substantively, I think it's where, you know, where, where she wants it to be. Where it's been for a while. Mm -hmm. But I think, Jim, before there's any public hearings, the final document is going to have to be created, and that's going to address the issue that you're raising. Yeah, yeah just so long as we're very clear. Yeah. To the public, about, right? You know, yeah. the, this, the, the this public and this is the other. These are the other proposals that we have before. Absolutely. If we don't already have this draft, we might consider putting this up on our town website so people can read through. Um, before I uh, call for uh, a vote on the resolution, <coughs> excuse me. You'll note that January is misspelled. Oh, I'm sorry. And Sue, what number are we up to? Well, this will be two. Two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move that we approve resolution number two of January 12, 2016, a resolution authorizing preparation of state environmental quality review proceedings and related matters regarding certain proposed local laws, including historic preservation. Shall I read the whereas is? Nobody seems too excited for me to read the whereas is. Um, but I think we should. So, uh, whereas it has been proposed that the town amend the town of Red Hook zoning law to protect regulated historic structures in the town, to modify the allowable uses in the zoning districts, to permit uses that will encourage adaptive reuse of Hudson River estates, to preserve their historic and natural character, to increase the required minimum lot area in the LD and I districts, to increase the minimum open space requirement for conservation subdivision in the WC, LD, RD5, and I districts, and to amend the zoning district map to reflect the existing historic landmark overlay district. And whereas that there has been presented to the town a proposed form of local law entitled a local law amending chapter 143 entitled zoning of the code of the town of Red Hook. 
Now therefore be it resolved by the town board of the town of Red Hook that the town hereby authorizes Green Plan, Inc., in conjunction with the attorney for the town to prepare all necessary proceedings, including environmental quality review and local waterfront revitalization program for such proposed local law and zoning map, including necessary mapping services through the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We also have uh, a very minor but important uh, correction to a zoning map uh, in one of our changes historically to the zoning map. There was a tiny portion of a property here near the village uh, where the zoning district line um, did not did not continue in a straight line. So we are trying to make that correction um, at the same time so we don't incur any additional costs. And that is our relating to rezoning a tiny portion of the Wilms parcel. And this is something that the previous town board uh, addressed. And now there's a resolution in front of us to correct this on the map at the same time we're going to the county to have the map redone. Um, that would be resolution number three. And again, if you'd be kind enough to correct January, dated January 12, 2016, it's a resolution authorizing preparation of state environmental quality review proceedings and related matters regarding rezoning a portion of Wilms parcel. Whereas it has been proposed that the town amend the town of Red Hook zoning law to amend zoning district map and rezone a parcel identified as tax parcel number 6272003463830 from TND, that's traditional neighborhood district, R, residential, to T, TND, CC, which I believe is commercial, thereby, thereby confirming conforming, rather, the zoning boundary for a portion of an existing <coughs> platted lot to the zoning boundary for the bulk of the lot. And there's a lot more whereas is. Do I hear a second of this uh, resolution? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And you see um, the last motion I need uh, you to consider is the costs associated with redoing our zoning district map. And the county uh, has given us an estimate of $676. And then when we approve that map, uh, there'll be some additional charges, minor charges, based upon how many copies we want. Do I hear a motion to approve the expenditure? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Moving right along. We're going to review that then digitally before they print it. Is that the idea? We are, yes. We're going to, uh, before it's approved, they're going to give us a draft of that. And we're going to take a look at that. And that will be a part of our uh, review before we adopt the law, and we'll have the ability to make any changes to the map as well as the law during the course of the public process. Okay, well I get a chance to stop talking for a little bit. Um, number five on our agenda is Highway Department, and Teresa, I see we have four items that you would like us to consider, so take it away if you would, please. Um, the first on the agenda is the authorization to expend highway funds. And you have the 284 agreement between the town of Red Hook and Dutchess County. So, um, Chris, do you, I didn't print out the resolutions. Do you have the resolutions for the items that I have? So, for general repairs, the sum of $50,000 shall be set aside to be expended for primary work and general 
repairs upon 60 miles of town highways, including sluices, culverts, and bridges having a span of less than five feet, and boardwalks or renewals thereof. And then under permanent improvements, um, it will be on town roads. We have not designated the projects yet at this time, but the amount of money designated for permanent improvements is $180,410. That's our CHIPS budget and our major um, road uh, improvement line in the budget. So um, it's that time of year that we ask you to sign this, and then we'll send the copies um, to the <coughs> county superintendent. OK. Do we have a resolution for that, Chris, or can we no, just move? No, because I didn't have that uh, item, but you okay. can do it by motion. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move that we approve the expenditure of highway funds as outlined by our highway superintendent. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, Chris. I thought we... No problem. That's okay. We're, we're passing that around for the to town board uh, signature. Yeah. And your approval will be evidenced by your signature. Okay. We have that letter, right, Chris? You see the letter? Yeah, the letter. I just, yeah. The letter signed by the supervisor and all the council members. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Next up. <coughs> the second item is uh, the Town of Red Hook Highway Department has a used 2003 Dodge Ram 2500 pickup truck with plow. It has been deemed no longer of use to the town, and we are asking that it be declared surplus. The estimated value is $3,000, and we would recommend selling the vehicle on a municipal auction site. Um, the town shall not warranty the condition, and the purchaser shall hold the town of Red Hook harmless from any claims or injuries arising from the purchaser operations or use of the vehicle or equipment. All items purchased shall have all town of Red Hook markings, letterings, and decals removed prior to the pickup of the items. So I think we do have a resolution we for that. Right, we do. Mm -hmm. We have a resolution. And that is, uh, the town board would declare the item as surplus equipment, the 2003 Dodge Ram pickup truck. And uh, there's a procedure in here that we developed, I think, in conjunction with Teresa the last time we had a surplus item uh, to authorize uh, the purchasing agent to go through an auction agent um, with a standard commission and uh, to award um, uh, you know, to the uh, highest bidder. Um, and then uh, the purchasing agent's authorized to dispose of scrap. Is that your recommendation here as well, if there's no bid? Yes. Yes, okay. So that's the process that we followed in the past. Okay. And so well, I so move it as, as, uh, as written up on the proposed resolution. Second. Okay, before we vote, this is resolution number... It would be four. Four mm -hmm. of January 12, 2016. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The resolution passes. Next. Um, the next is a discussion about the uh, Occupational Safety and Health Hazard Abatement Board has uh, released a 2016 request for a proposal for occupational safety and health and education grants. And um, the highway department is interested in applying for one of these grants. And it is a no match grant. And we can do the application online ourselves. And what we would like to do is update our in-house um, training materials every uh, spring or January through March, we have um, training sessions for the crew, and we hope to include the two villages in them as well. And we are still using videotapes. So we have the opportunity to purchase DVDs and the equipment that goes along with it to be able to um, get up to speed with our uh, PESH requirements for training at the highway department. Okay. Well, that seems pretty easy, a, a grant that there's no match and you'll do all the work for them. And that uh, deals with labor safety. I, I don't know how we could say no to that, Teresa. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I asked the board to authorize that for the department. Uh, you have to. I, I second that motion. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you very much, Teresa, for doing that. And the last item um, is a discussion of a shared services agreement with New York State regarding materials and equipment. Uh, New York State sent us a letter. I think it's a standard letter that they send out to all the towns um, in Dutchess County for um, shared services in case of emergencies. And I think they have a limit of $10,000. It's a short form. And my recommendation would be to sign it. We have developed a good relationship with the state DOT in our area. And um, we think that they could count on us for help and we could count on them. So I don't know if there's something that needs to be reviewed by the attorney. But that's what uh, we had it um, issued December in 2015. Right. We, did, we did see that. And you uh, you I saw did. that. Mm -hmm. We got it in December from you. Thank you. So it's just so. to bring it forward at this meeting. It was tabled till this meeting. And okay. Now what's the ten thousand dollars? So limit on the, the limit. cost of the. Um, the cost of us or the cost of the to the state. The cost be, of the share. Either of, way. Either yeah. way. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to share services yeah. and materials above that ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, then they have a long form and okay. a lot more. Um, is that ten thousand total for the year, or just per incident of sharing? I'm not sure. It's the total amount of the agreement, so it would be the total. Total value. for the year, then. Right. Is this something we would benefit from, Teresa? You think from an additional meeting to allow uh, Chris to take a look at it? And we it's up to Chris. I, mean, I think I, I don't think we're going to renegotiate the agreement with them. So right. I think it's this it's is all, it's so moved. Pretty it's pretty nice okay. <laughs> Terrific. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The so motion is passed. We 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 do. We have the original. We do. I I have something. I don't know that it's the original, yes. but we will. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Teresa. Keep up the good work. You tackled that half an inch of snow. We're all, we're all safe now. Thank you so much. Um, okay, we are on. Moving right along. Okay, uh, number six uh, deals with our Zoning Board of Appeals. And this is a carryover, actually, of several years ago. I know there's been uh, a movement to uh, perhaps get our town in performance with recommendations by the state. I know there was a draft law of which um, essentially, you see the same again here in 2016. A draft law was uh, written back in 2012. Um, as uh, you all know, but the folks uh, out in the public may not, we have a seven-member uh, zoning board of appeals. We've been grandfathered with the seven seven members. Um, but Chris, would you like to uh, maybe educate us a little bit about the sure. state and where we are? Well, the statutory provision right now says that if you're going to have a zoning board of appeals, you would have either three or five members, and you would then have the members have terms equal to the number of members on the board. Okay. Um, they do have a statutory provision that says that if you had a you know different uh, board <coughs> membership uh, prior to the change in 1992, that you could retain that seven member um, term with the number of board members, which is what we've had. Okay. And why we have this on the agenda again this year is because you really only have the opportunity to go down from seven to five when you have a resignation because you're not permitted to remove a member of the zoning board in order to accomplish that reduction. So it's it's on the agenda for discussion, and um, I wonder, uh, Sarah, if we could start with you, if you have any thoughts on this. You and I are both new to uh, to this effort, but... Um, if it's something that the state thinks is important to reduce the number of members, then I'd, I'd sort of like to read a little bit more about why that's the case, but it seems to make sense to me. Um, I've observed other towns and villages where there are five members of EBAs that seem to work really efficiently. So um, I don't have any concerns about it, but I'm interested to hear more discussion because I'm coming at it a little bit new, okay. the discussion. Okay. 
Bill? Well, over the years where the, <coughs> the issue has been raised, um, we researched a little bit about it, and uh, I think there were some references uh, even in our town uh, code that, uh, that refer to a five-member board in the town. There's always been an issue about doing business in the town by having, you know, efficient committees and boards and where we have quorums and where we can do business. And so um, the chairman uh, over the year or so ago uh, had indicated that it would be uh, more efficient to have five members instead of seven. More would be less of a quorum, you could get business done, and it, would, it would, wouldn't uh, delay cases uh, that are important to the citizens. So. Uh, I'm in favor of the five-member board for those reasons. It is the state law, and uh, conforming our law with the state law is what I would uh, recommend. Harry, did you have any thoughts on it? Um, well, I, mean, I, I think it's worthy of discussion. We have uh, this. This would be a hearing for that purpose to to listen to to the public. We've just talked about it ourselves repeatedly, um, and have not moved forward with it. Um, and perhaps we should broaden this discussion at this time, which is what this would do, uh, and uh, and move move on from there. Okay, Jim. Um, this particular proposal makes absolutely no sense at all to me. Okay. I've probably attended more zoning board meetings than, uh, in fact, I know I have for a fact than any anyone else and everybody else on the board put together. And my feeling is, I feel very very strongly this way. Um, <clears throat> One, it won't improve the efficiency of the board at all. There would be ways to improve the efficiency on the zoning board, um, but limiting the membership is not one way. Um, the state originally wanted seven members back in the 70s when it was created, then it, they, they had the state changed that. And of course, as we know historically, Albany always has our best interests in mind. Um, one, number two is, this is the only board that has the legal right to change zoning that are not elected, mm -hmm. as we all are. Mm -hmm. And my personal feeling is, you know, my personal feeling is that it should be a manager, it should be nine or more. Because here you are, you want to limit it from seven to five people that can actually change the zoning in our town, and they're not elected, they're just appointed that position. Mm -hmm. And we have absolutely no right to influence them at all, except with the fact is who we appoint on that board. And I feel the smaller the board, would be much more, much more influenced by politi political influence. So I personally feel that you have different thoughts, different people, and ha you know maintain our seven-member board, and it's a, a lot less subject to political influence or anything else. Because as I said, they, they have the absolute right to change our zoning. And they are not elected by the people. They're appointed by us. And therefore, it makes a lot more sense to me to keep it Seven is a very working number. If it were my choice, I'd make it nine, because nine is a working number, but it's not. It's, it's seven. Um, and as far as having a quorum or, or getting enough people there, that really makes no difference. You know, a quorum of seven, you have to have four. A quorum of five, you have to have three. So that really is a, is a moot point. But, and I feel very strongly that seven is the proper number for that board. And as I said, I, I served on the zoning board back in the 80s, and I've been liaison a number of years and attended many, many of their meetings. So, there okay. you have my opinion. Okay. Well, thanks, Jim. Um, well, I don't have much to say on the topic, except uh, I, I do believe in broadening the participation uh, from the public. So, uh, in that regard, I, I agree with you, Jim. Um, I guess my concern is that with some of these boards, and, and in particular the zoning board and, and, and also the planning board, when we make appointments to seven member uh, boards like this, we're making seven year appointments. So um, we, don't, we don't get a chance to revisit those appointments uh, very frequently. Um, the way it works is if we reduce it down to five or three, then we do get a chance to, to uh, let others have an opportunity to participate on those boards, um, and to really, it's checks and balances. Um, I, I note that we have an assessment review board, which I think is only, you know, it's probably less than five um, that we're operating, three perhaps. Um, other than that, I don't have a, a strong feeling one way or the other um, on the numbers. So. 
how how should we proceed? Um, shall we take Harry's discussion, move it forward, and just discuss it again? Have a public hearing. Um, what's what's your pleasure? Probably should Nothing. discuss it further before the public hearing is scheduled. Okay. So you want to bring this up uh, at our second meeting again without a public hearing? What do you think, Sarah? Sure. I agree. Harry? Sure. Jim? Yeah, I, I, okay. you know, I obviously would not be in favor of public hearing because I don't see the, right. the need for this. Right. Okay. So <laughs> why, it sounds like we're tabling it for one more meeting at least. Um, did, you, did somebody say that the chair of the zoning board of appeals is is welcomes this measure? Yeah. Um, Can Nick, we invite Nick to come and, and speak about it? Speak I, about I think it? we we could. Um, I don't know that necessarily we want to put him in the hot seat on this, but yeah, sure, we can invite him to uh, to educate us as to why he thinks five would be better. He did send in some correspondence I think I have here. Yeah, or a letter um, would be fine if you yeah, let me. Now. Let me read to you what he sent in just recently. The downside of having so much material. Yeah. yeah, basically he just talks about how he thinks it would be more efficient to operate the board with five people. And uh, I think we should probably move on at this point. The next item on the agenda is just a very quick update uh, on some clean energy efforts that we have going in the town. As you may know, we applied for a uh, grant uh, regarding Solarize Hudson Valley. We're calling our consortium, I think, Solarize Northern Duchess. And Sarah, uh, you're being involved with the CAC in this effort. Could you update us as to that? Sure. So Red Hook is a hub community for five other towns and three villages um, in Northern Duchess, and we're calling ourselves the Northern Duchess, Solarize Northern Duchess. And the lead for the program is the Northern Duchess Alliance. And so together with the other towns that are that are in the hub, we are um, going to be launching an educational campaign on um, residential and commercial solar opportunities for the people in those towns. Anybody even outside those towns can participate, but we'll be holding educational events and um, you know, like displays at different public areas like farmers markets and you know, whatever other kinds of opportunities we can think of. But the, the basic thrust of the program is education and um, the goal is to get a hundred new solar consumers within that broad area to sign up. Um, so it's all grant funded and run by... <laughs> run by volunteers, so we're looking forward to uh, launching in, but we it won't start till March, so I'll probably wait until we have more to report. And what was the um, amount of the grant? I don't know the amount, actually. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, um, we're going to go for formal training on how to, how to work within the terms of the grant later in January, so. Um, I'll remind three. you. Yeah, go ahead. I'll remind you again that, that the, the roof of the highway garage has been designed to support it's a rather large... It's not the municipal conference, okay. but that would be great, Keep, yeah. It would be nice to find a grant for that. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. um, sure so we'll definitely be dispersing more information as we have it. And, um, yeah, go ahead, Tracy, did you have the grants for the people who want the solar or the grants um, for the program that yeah. you're doing? The grants for the program, so it's just, it's not very much money, and it's just money to put on events. And I, I believe the idea, and um, if Laura Houston was here, she could tell you even more, but maybe we'll invite her before the program launches to give a really full presentation. But the idea is that the together with um, the larger Hudson Valley Solarize program, we pick an installer 
um, who is vetted by the state as, as a, an installer who can participate in their funding program. The state has a bunch of different programs that help residents and commercial owners um, fund their solar projects. And then the basic idea is that, you know, Linda's been thinking about solar, but she had a lot of questions and wasn't quite sure how to go. And so that's the person that we're looking for, you know, to reach out to that person and say, come learn more and let's get you, you know, signed up to a program that fits what you need. So there's no, you, you know, nobody's on the hook. You know, if, if we can't meet the 100, then that's fine. But it's all, everybody in Pleasant Valley, Hyde Park, Milan, Red Hook, and Ryan Beck and the villages that are within those towns. So we figured 100 was, you know, it was ambitious, but a safe goal. So yeah, we're looking forward to getting launched. And um, okay. once we do our formal training, I'll have more to report. And we'll it start to get nice. events on the books. It would be nice for the residents to have an alternative, because now there's a lot of high pressure solar people out there yeah. right. trying to push these sales. Yeah. And to have an alternative to discuss mm -hmm. um, the options with would be great. Yeah, and I think, you know, like with a lot of these state programs, even if you don't end up signing up through this program, it's just going to be a tremendous educational opportunity. So you could come and really learn what are the different state programs that will help you fund your project, you know, and what are the benefits of solar and what are the things you need to look into as a, as a resident. So, yeah. As soon as we get some events, then, you know, we'll be mentioning them and promoting them through town hall. Right. Uh, the other portion of that on the um, line item there is something called CDG. Um, NYSERDA, through their sort of offshoot, New York Sun, um, has now um, significant grant funding in the, to the tune of a few hundred million dollars for something called community distributed generation. It's a fancy terminology for a community solar farm. And we have been already working uh, for the last six or seven weeks um, in conjunction with the village of Red Hook and perhaps and hopefully with the village of Tivoli in trying to identify um, an appropriate site or sites um, that we could um, take advantage of this program. And how it works is you build the solar farm, and then Central Hudson gets a list of the members who have joined your uh, CSA, if you will, your solar farm, and they credit all of those property owners, or meter owners, I should say, more correctly, with a portion of the generation from the solar farm. So we are now in the process of taking a look at um, a system that could be as large as 1.75 megawatts and would be enough to um, offset the remaining electricity usage by all of our municipal <coughs> buildings and services and in addition to that would become available for our residents and uh, commercial property. Um, it's something we Hopefully, we'll have uh, more information about moving forward, but it's an exciting opportunity where um, homeowners who, for one reason or another, because of trees or orientation, can't participate in that clean energy option, well, now they would uh, have that possibility. So when it comes together more, we'll have a presentation probably by Dennis Collet uh, and Laurie Houston. All right, so that's uh, number seven. We're on number eight, Town Hall Campus Interior Building Modifications. And this is um, a report of the results of the bid. We opened bids here in Town Hall on the 8th of this month. Um, and we have some correspondence from our engineers <coughs> to the town, Crawford and Associates regarding those bids. Chris, you're looking at me as if you want to chime in, so please go ahead. Well, I don't have a copy of that in my packet, but oh. I'm assuming that what you have is a copy of the bid tabulation, which is just a record of what the results of the bid were, the raw bid results. It is. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as of late this afternoon, 
Crawford was still in the process of evaluating those uh, bids so that they will, um, they're not prepared to make a recommendation tonight, but they will be uh, moving that forward and uh, completing their review uh, for the next meeting. That's right. Would you, would you prefer I read the results of these bids this evening? Uh, you can certainly read them into the record. They were read at the uh, bid report, but um, okay. and the clerk has them in her office, but you can certainly yeah. do that if you want to. Uh, we just need to make sure that the board has it and then it's read into the record. I mean, it's in the record for official purposes in the clerk's office. Right. Well, I, I you know, if I don't need to read them, if I don't need to read them right now, especially since they're all being looked at and no decisions been made, I think we'll we'll just. Uh, but they are available. They're available in the town clerk's office for anybody to look at, and when we have an award to announce on that bid, we will do so. Okay, uh, ninth moving right along, and I think we're making pretty good time. Um, the. We have an intermunicipal agreement. Um, as you all know, uh, we share our athletic facilities with the Red Hook Central School District. And um, very quickly, I just want to bring this to attention, your attention that that intermunicipal agreement has expired. Um, so we need to renew uh, one with the school district, and so. Um, I would appreciate, um, you know, in the near future, if you could contribute any thoughts about the terms of any future agreement. I did meet with uh, our school superintendent and business manager and the uh, president of the board um, last week. Um, they are interested in renewing an agreement. Um, we obviously did not get a chance to discuss terms, but they expressed an interest in having an agreement that extended past three years, if that's possible, provided we have something that um, uh, worked for, for both entities. So I don't really uh, need anything uh, from you all this evening on, on this topic, but just ask you to, to please think about it. Um, they have to develop their uh, programs uh, starting March 1st, so it's something that we'll need to resolve uh, later this month or early next month at the latest. And I enclose one of the old agreements so that you can take a look at what that says. I had a question um, mm -hmm. looking at the agreement. Um, it's, and I remember this being established in 2013. We, um, the old agreement talked about the formation of the committee of six members. Did that ever get formed? Or did the committee ever? It was supposed to um, initiate a study of the finances related to the intermunicipal agreement. Um, I believe the committee did get started. I can I can tell you that the uh, the finances associated with it. Uh, John Kuhn has uh, just a ton of information related to that. Who was on entire, the committee, do you know? An well, entire we, we binder never, full. We never did really create a, a committee. Okay. As some of the members of the Rec Commission, and, and I led some discussions with the, uh, uh, the, the, school, the school board, right. or the, the powers that be, um, be broader than the school board. You know, right. and, uh, um, and they came over here right. on previous occasions. And ultimately, didn't, in the last, after the last conversations, we we did not get a response from them. They would said they would get back to us, and, and uh, we have had not heard. Okay. And well, after a number of attempts to uh, to complete the conversation. Okay. Well, um, they're they're at the table, so to speak, and mm -hmm. and, and so we need to be as well. Um, we're going to go into attorney client, and and I have some. Uh, questions for the attorney on our intermunicipal agreement as well. Um, is there anything else for discussion on this topic now? We're going to have John weigh in on it too and advice on that, are we not? Because he's got the best handle on you know what is done and spent and so on in the park. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know that uh, he's been out of the meetings. Yeah. yeah, John and I met over this topic, and um, I know that it was on the agenda uh, at last night's rec commission meeting as well. And John has given me some uh, some thoughts and some parameters uh, on that topic. Okay. 
Ooh. We are at the point. I don't point. want to get tense. What's that? Run those blades. That's, that's the state plowing. Oh, the state plowing. <laughs> Very good. Um, well, we're moving right along, and we have correspondence. So I'll quickly try and get through with the correspondence. We have two letters from Agriculture and Markets, New York State, um, both uh, with regard to inspection reports. One is uh, with our dog control officer, and that uh, inspection was completed on December 22nd, and it was rated satisfactory. And I can share with you more information on that. The same is true of the municipal shelter inspection report, which happened a week prior on December 15th. That was also rated satisfactory. One of the things, Bill, are you ready? You thought you were going to have easy Friday mornings in the task force. Well, it turns out that the Greenway has updated all of their um, recommendations. That includes the following centers and green spaces, slower, safer streets, something I, I am particularly interested in, rural roads, building bicycle networks, convenience stores with gas pumps, and recycling and waste collection, green infrastructure. All of those guides are now available uh, on their website, that's the Hudson River Valley Greenway, and they are looking for us to review these updates and also to adopt them because we are one of the communities that have signed on to uh, the Greenway Compact. Okay, we'll look at it. All right, there's some homework there. All right. I wasn't about to, to print them all out. And I, I would hope they would have some hard copies of those to, that was to, to be working to documents. Why do I think we would have to pay for them, Eric? Okay, um, but they are available on their website. We're and being green, Harry. Hmm? We're being They're being green. green. There we go. Good point. Um, and then the last thing I have is just that um, you know there are all these shared services committees now, and one we have here um, related to the Northern Duchess towns and. There's a shared services meeting uh, actually scheduled tomorrow night, 7 p.m., right, Teresa? Yep. At uh, Wilcox Park. So I will hightail it back down from Albany so I can join you for that. Uh, that's all I have for correspondence. Um, does anybody else have anything to add? Okay, and then we're getting to the end of the evening. Any public comment from the last few remaining public here? Okay, very good. Uh, at this time, I would like to make a motion to go into executive session regarding the hire and fire and promotion of an individual. Um, afterwards, we will be going into attorney-client. Do I have a second for that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much.